very good morning his excellency the galaxy of intellectuals from all over the world guests my dear friends students on this beautiful morning i nasheen welcome you all to the 75th anniversary conference of the pakistan institute of international affairs on pakistan and the changing global order we hope it's going to be a very a stimulating event that would help make better sense of the changing politics in the world and how well pakistan can navigate it let's commence the program with a few verses from holy quran and for recitation i am pleased to invite ms malka khan for recitation and translation malka khan أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب پناہ مانگتی ہوں اللہ کی شیطان مردود سے شروع کرتی ہوں اللہ کے نام سے جو بڑا مہربان اور نہایت رحم کرنے والا ہے سب طرح کی تعریفیں اللہ ہی کے لیے ہیں جو تمام مخلوقات کا پروردگار ہے بڑا مہربان نہایت رحم والا انصاف کے دن کا حاکم ہے اے پروردگار ہم تیری ہی عبادت کرتے ہیں اور تجھی سے مدد مانگتے ہیں ہم کو سیدھے رستے چلا ان لوگوں کے رستے پر جن پر تو نے اپنا فضل کرتا رہا جن پہ نہ غصے ہوتا رہا اور نہ حکمرانوں کے وہ آخر الداوانا الحمد للہ رب العالمین سبحان اللہ جزاک اللہ پلیز رائز فار دی نیشنل اینتھم Thank you. 
It's my privilege now to invite the honorary chairperson of the institute, Dr. Masuma Hassan, for the welcome address. Dr. Masuma Hassan, please, on the stage. Mahsaram Sayyid Murad Ali Shah, Chief Minister Sin, Excellencies, members of the Sindh government, delegates to the conference, members of the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs, distinguished guests. A very warm welcome to the conference on Pakistan and the changing global order, which the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs has organized to celebrate 75 years of its founding, which coincides with the creation of Pakistan itself. It has been a long journey. From Kashi House, Connaught Place, New Delhi, to our premises on Ervana Southern Road, Karachi, in the landmark building, which has been declared protected heritage. When Pakistan became a reality, the members of the Indian Institute of International Affairs, which had been established in 1936, voted by majority to shift it to Karachi, which was then the capital of Pakistan. In this endeavor, they had the blessing of Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah and of Mr. Liaqat Ali Khan. Khwaja Sarwar Hassan, who then headed the institute, packed and loaded all its movable assets including its small but precious library on wagons bound for Karachi. It was first located in the iconic prayer hall and meetings were held in the imposing Somerset House on Somerset Street, later renamed Raja Ghazamfar Ali Road. Somerset House was a public space which was used for various gatherings. I understand that currently it houses paramilitary offices. By 1955, the institute had shifted to its own premises in the heart of Southern, in this our city. Few institutions can have had the privilege of being founded by such an array of famous people the founders of our institute were among the most eminent citizens of our country. Today, I want to name them. Apart from Khwaja Sarwar Hassan, who set up the institute, Professor A.B.A. Halim was its first chairman and so remained for more than 25 years. He was the vice chancellor of the University of Sindh, the University of Karachi, had not yet been established, but later he became vice chancellor also of the University of Karachi. Shaista Ikramullah, Jahanara Shahnawaz, Dr. Mahmood Hussain, and Dr. Ishtiaq Hussain Qureshi, the well known historian, were members of the Constituent Assembly of Pakistan. Altaf Hussain, editor of Dawn, Jamshed Nusarwanji Mehta, Karachi's first mayor and philanthropist, Yusuf Harun and DM Malik from the business community, Shahid Suravardi, Mumtaz Hassan, M. Ayub, Mia Bashir Ahmad, the young Agha Shahi, and the young Rashid Ibrahim belonged to the public service. And Hemandas Vadwani was advisor to the Sindh government. Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan, who was a great friend of the Institute, inaugurated it in March 1948 and described its purpose 
to act as a bridge between policymakers and public opinion. And that is the purpose which we have lived up to for the last 75 years. Says Afrullah Khan, Pakistan's first foreign minister, also supported the institute and was a frequent speaker here, often discussing the debates on the Kashmir issue on which he represented Pakistan at the United Nations. All the original work on Kashmir, the briefs and analyses were done at the Institute and it was used by policymakers even in years to come. Thousands, and I mean thousands of people have passed through the Institute's portals during the last 75 years. Statesmen, scholars, diplomats, jurists, journalists, students from Pakistan and abroad, they have all used its library and research facilities. In every corner of the country, one comes across women and men who have studied or trained here. Many budding diplomats have acknowledged that they learned the skills of their trade here. The Institute has always provided a welcoming academic shelter, a home to them all. Through conferences, seminars, roundtables, and lately also through webinars, we have disseminated knowledge and information about global concerns and Pakistan's foreign policy. Our flagship quarterly, Pakistan Horizon, has the distinction of being published without a break since 1948 and is consulted by scholars throughout the world. Almost every head of state and government has made a formal statement on foreign policy from our platform. The late Mr. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto, who was admired and followed by millions, both addressed its members on many occasions. This two-day conference is bringing together diplomats from Pakistan and scholars from Pakistan and many countries, Sri Lanka, Nepal, the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, the United States of America, and the United Kingdom. Their collective wisdom and expertise will contribute to the understanding of global and regional issues, changes in the global order, shifting perspectives and new horizons. Pakistan's foreign policy, its economy and connectivity, and the security challenges it faces today. Sadly, the delegates we had invited from Bangladesh were not allowed to join us by the authorities, which is a reflection of the situation prevailing in our region. But there should always be a silver lining. With the world in turmoil and wrecked by conflict, the threat from non-state actors, mass migration, and thousands on the move, gender-based violence, stateless people, and the hazards of climate change. In the last session of the con conference, we will discuss how to seek global peace. In all our work, we have always pondered on how peace and subsequent progress can be achieved, not only in our South Asian region, but also peace for mankind. Mr. Chief Minister, the members of the Institute and I personally cannot thank you enough for your patronage over many years and your understanding of the nature and importance of our work. Your support has enabled us to continue our planned research and diplomacy events, as well as to train a stream of researchers who have spread out in different parts of the world, and most of whom incidentally have been women. To mark the 75th anniversary of the founding of our institute, Pakistan Post 
has issued a commemorative stamp, which can be seen in the backdrop. I want to thank Dr. Asma Ibrahim. I want to thank Dr. Asma Ibrahim, director of the State Bank Museum and Art Gallery, for her help in designing the stamp, as also Mr. Adil Salahuddin, the famous designer of Pakistan Post. You will notice that for the backdrop to this event, my colleagues and I have rather unconventionally chosen the Milky Way, the galaxy at the edge of which our planet Earth exists. We did this as a symbolic reference to the future for achieving excellence and for respecting dissent and diversity. For as the great poet Allama Muhammad Iqbal said, sitaron se aage jahan aur bhi hain, abhi ishq ke imtaha aur bhi hain. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Masuma. Now we request our distinguished chief guest, His Excellency, Janam Sayyid Murad Ali Shah, to address the gathering. He has been very supportive of intellectual and literary gatherings in the city. I would feel really very grateful if we could have him to the dice between a huge round of applause. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dr. Masuma Hassan, Chairperson of the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs. I see a galaxy of former diplomats here. Some I've had the pleasure of meeting. Um, and uh, I know uh, the diplomatic community follows protocol. So if I do anything out of protocol, please pardon me for it. Um, Mr. Ashraf Jahangir Kazi sitting here, Mr. Najmuddin Sheikh, uh, Mr. Jalil Abbas Jilani, with whom I had the pleasure of traveling also once uh, on a state visit to the Prime Minister, Mr. Ashfaq Hussain, uh, Ambassador Zamir Akram, Lieutenant General Khalid Kidwai, uh, Mr. Mohammad Sadiq, SAPM, sorry sir, again, uh, my fault, I should have followed the uh, protocol. Uh, members of the diplomatic corps, delegates from abroad in Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. First of all, I'd just like to let you know that uh, Foreign Minister of Pakistan, uh, Chairman of Pakistan People's Party, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, uh, was to come to this conference. Uh, and uh, he had to travel to New York for the group of 77 plus China, meeting where he, I guess, hands over to the next chairman. So I'm very grateful to uh, Dr. Masuma to have given me this honor to be here. It's indeed a great pleasure of me to inaugurate this commemorative 75th anniversary conference of the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs. And the topic is Pakistan and the changing global order. This remark remarkable unique and independent institution is the pride of our country and I congratulate its members past and present for nurturing, sustaining and protecting it since its inception. We recognize that the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs is the oldest learned body and the leading think tank of our country. Among its founders were not only its own members but patrons like Qaid Azim Muhammad Ali Jannah and Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan. This is an honor shared by, uh, not shared by any other institution. It is the acclaimed pioneer of research in international affairs and many other institutions have gained from its experience and followed it in its footsteps. I have also seen its flagship quarterly Pakistan Horizon, for, of which I get a copy, a uh, complimentary copy, a research journal of international repute, which has been published since 1948 without a break which in itself is commendable. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I glanced through the program of the conference, I saw that it puts on the table every issue of contemporary importance in the changing global order, which will be addressed by a galaxy of scholars and diplomats from Pakistan and abroad. 
I was also impressed that the program ends on a note of peace and fluid global order. Whatever the issues and approach, I believe that achieving the peace is ultimate goal for all governments. We realize that the world is mired by conflicts and divisions for reasons which are historical and geographical and for no reasons at all also, I'd say. Hence, a concerted approach to all issues and challenges within and outside Pakistan is the need of the hour. In recent years, we've seen the shift of geopolitical power from the West to the East. We have witnessed the rise of Asia, especially through ASEAN. A resilient Africa, and more importantly, an assertive China with its expanding outreach through its Belt and Road Initiative, and a resurgent Russia. We ourselves are beneficiaries of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which will bring vast economic benefits to our country. Our own region is beset with unsettled issues, which I see are covered in the program. The unresolved Kashmir issue and the unrelenting brutality of the Indian government against the Kashmiri people is a cause of universal concern. Their sufferings continue unabated and so does their resolve to decide their own future. The Taliban government in Afghanistan poses a challenge to all players in the region and Pakistan faces its own challenges not only of border security, but also of water and food security. However, ladies and gentlemen, we must remember that Pakistan is the fifth, fifth largest country in the world and has been an active and progressive power on the world stage. In the changing global order, it is one of the nine declared nuclear powers. It is a responsible nuclear power which has always used nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. Even as a young nation, it stood by countries struggling against colonial rule and lobbied for their independence from the colonial masters. A member of many treaties dealing with support and development and least developed countries and humanitarian laws, it is one of the former high cooperation organization, which is the largest regional organization in the world. It has always tried to build a consensus and played a positive role in these organizations. I am glad that the program of conference addresses the issue of climate change. And here I would like to mention the recent floods in Pakistan, which uh, were not because of our own doing. The climate change, the global greenhouse gas emissions, uh, of which Pakistan only contributes 0.8%, have created this effect all over the world. And Pakistan, especially during the last monsoon, suffered. Uh, almost two, one third of the country was underwater. Uh, thousands died. Tens of thousands were injured. Almost five million acres of cultivated crop was destroyed, out of which uh, three and a half million acres was in Sindh alone. Uh, we have more than two million houses in the province of Sindh, either partially or totally damaged. Uh, we have our irrigation network, our road network, our schools in the flooded areas, the hospitals in the flooded areas which have damaged and need repair. I am grateful to the international community on behalf of Pakistan, on behalf of the government of Sindh. We acknowledge the help that we got, uh, but we still need a lot more. As the UN Secretary General, when he came to uh, Pakistan in uh, Larkana in his speech, he said this, I've seen is a disaster of biblical proportions. And we need support from the international world and we need justice from the international world. Uh, we are not asking for compensation. We are not asking for donations. We are not asking for uh, pity. We are asking for justice. And uh, for this reason, uh, as I said, I'm grateful uh, that the, of the help that we received during the relief phase yeah. and the relief phase is still there. Uh, we are in the winter. I'm actually after this conference and there was a last minute hitch because I had forgotten uh, that I'd um, made a schedule for visiting the flooded areas, but then uh, I changed my plan and after I'll go this afternoon, I have to visit some uh, flood areas because still the relief effort is on. And uh, people, uh, even people who've gone back to their houses, they know houses. So we have to provide them with tents, we have to provide them with dry rations till they're able to stand on their own feet. 
Uh, in this uh, regard, we are going for a pledging conference uh, on the 9th of January, uh, United Nations and Pakistan government sponsored a pledging conference. And uh, we plan to talk to the diplomatic corps on this, but I find this a uh, good opportunity of raising this issue uh, that Pakistan does need support. Pakistan needs support in its relief activities. And Pakistan needs support to rebuild better, to uh, have uh, climate resilient uh, buildings so that uh, any future uh, catastrophes like this, and there are going to be rains, uh, the climate change will bring us more uh, disasters, but we have to be better prepared for these and our people have to be better prepared and we need international help for this. Uh, we, you know, experts are now studying the convergence of climate change and national security. As you know, climate change has ravaged our country during the recent floods. Bringing a relief to people displaced by floods and made homeless has been a major challenge for our government. But we have put our hearts and souls in the efforts to retrieve the homes and livelihoods and to rehabilitate them. The government of Sindh has been a leading force in enacting progressive legislation in many spheres. We have given legal protection to women, minorities, the marginalized, and children. Over the last few years, we have adopted many pro-women laws. Sindh was the first province to enact a law against domestic violence. We uh, have a law against child marriages, uh, the only province, I believe, I, which has a law. I don't know if the other province. We were the first province for sure. Uh, I don't know if the other provinces have followed or not. We are. Uh, we actually enacted a law for forced conversion uh, or, or uh, measures against forced conversion uh, and uh, that has been stuck up. Uh, we have recently formed a committee to talk to ulamas uh, and to make sure that their concerns are addressed and we pass this law uh, against forced conversion. Uh, we've got uh, several other progressive laws for labor, for the farmers, and sin uh, in legislation has been in the forefront and we've uh, led the other provinces. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish uh, the best of uh, support for this uh, conference. I hope that the recommendations emerging from the conference will help in formulation of policies which can help to resolve contemporary problems. I appreciate the efforts of Dr. Masuma Hassan, Chairperson of the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs, its council members, and a team for academic achievements and wish them continued success for the future. Once again, thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a pleasure and honor for me. I would have liked to spend some more time here, but unfortunately, uh, because I have to uh, leave and I'll be back, unfortunately, late tomorrow evening. Otherwise, I would have loved to be here, but uh, uh, Dr. Seva, I look forward to the recommendations from this conference and anything which the provincial government can do uh, to uh, make Pakistan a better place and to have Pakistan uh, in a, uh, you know, put Pakistan in a better position in the international arena. Uh, I assure you of our fullest co uh, cooperation. Thank you very much once again. Pakistan, Zindabad. <laughs> Thank you very much, Murad Ali Shah Sahab. It's been an honor to have you here. So this brings us to the end of inaugural session. Tea is served right here in the room. We will regather at 11.50 uh, for the session one in ballroom B. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>